Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to work four more examples of mole conversion problems. Our objective for this video is the same as the last, to convert between moles, representative particles, grams, and liters of a gas at STP. This problem asks us to find how many molecules of ammonia are in a sample that weighs 50 grams. When we're doing these mole conversion problems, if the uh, problem mentions grams or mass, we're going to need the molar mass as a conversion factor. So ammonia has a formula of NH3. The periodic table tells us that nitrogen weighs 14. We also have three hydrogens, and the periodic table tells us each hydrogen weighs one. So if we add all of that up, we get 17 grams or 17 grams per mole for ammonia. Uh, when we do our dimensional analysis here to convert grams to molecules, uh, we're going to start with these 50 grams. And with chemical dimensional analysis, it's a really good idea to also write in what the chemical is. So we're going to write the number, the unit, and the chemical. And we'll place that over 1. So to make things cancel out, the bottom of my next step has to have grams of ammonia. The top of my next step needs to have what we're looking for, and we are looking for molecules of ammonia. There is no standard abbreviation for molecules, so I, this is just my own personal Patterson abbreviation. I use MC for molecules where they're both capital. You don't want to use something like MOL because that's the actual official abbreviation for mole. So um, something like MC is a good one for molecules. When I look at the radiation sign, the uh, mass in grams is the molar mass. And so we just calculated that the molar mass is 17. When I look for molecules on the radiation sign, I don't see the word molecules anywhere. That's because molecule is a type of representative particle. The representative particles are atoms, molecules, and formula units. So with representative particles, the number is Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If I look at my units here, I started with grams of ammonia, and I have grams of ammonia on the bottom of the next step, so they cancel out. So whatever number I calculate here, we'll have units of molecules of ammonia. So just kind of going left to right, I've got 50 times 6.02 EE23 divided by 17. And uh, let's see, that gives me 1.77 times 10 to the 24th, and the units on this are molecules of ammonia. Well, uh, this problem is going to be a hard one, right? Because we have that little asterisk up there. So this problem is going to take our concept um, of representative particles one step further. And you might want to go back and review the earlier video about representative particles if um, this is still confusing after we make it through here. Um, let's like, take a look at one molecule of ammonia. One molecule of ammonia has a Lewis structure that looks something like this. And so for every one molecule, we have three hydrogen atoms. So the trick on this question, which wants to know how many atoms of hydrogen are in a sample of ammonia, uh, which weighs 50 grams, so still building on our two previous examples, um, the trick here is that for ammonia, the representative particle is a molecule of ammonia, which is one nitrogen and three hydrogens. So when we use Avogadro's number, we can find molecules of, hydro, uh, of ammonia. But this problem isn't asking for that, it's asking for atoms of hydrogen. Well, if you look at one molecule of ammonia, it contains three atoms of hydrogen. So once we know how many molecules of ammonia we have, we can simply multiply that number times three to get how many atoms of hydrogen there are. Now, you could go back to our previous problem, number two, 
and take the answer and start there and finish the calculation. But just to show you like the worst case scenario of one of these mole conversion problems, I'm going to start this one from the very beginning, which our given quantity is 50 grams of ammonia. So I know the bottom of the next step has to have units of grams of ammonia. And off of the radiation sign, I know I've got to go to representative particles, which are going to be molecules of ammonia. And I know that for every 17 grams of ammonia, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And so we've got to string one more factor onto here to go from molecules to atoms. And that is that simply for every one molecule of ammonia, there are three atoms of hydrogen. And so if I cross out units, grams of ammonia cancel out with grams of ammonia, molecules cancel out with molecules, and what we're left with is atoms of hydrogen. So we have 50 times 6.02 EE23 divided by 17 and times 3. And that is going to give us 5.31 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. Now, the reason or, or the way you would recognize that Avogadro's number won't give you the answer we're looking for here is because atoms are not the representative particle for ammonia. And the information we are given, those 50 grams, are about ammonia. So if we use Avogadro's number on ammonia, we will get molecules of ammonia. Since we're looking for atoms of hydrogen, we have to do one extra step and multiply by three. All right, one last example problem here. How large of a volume is occupied by a sample of oxygen gas, which contains four and a half times 10 to the ninth, or four and a half billion molecules? Four and a half billion sounds like a lot of molecules. So four and a half times 10 to the ninth molecules of oxygen all over one. So I know I need molecules of oxygen in the bottom of the next step. And I'm looking for a volume. Well, a volume is liters. And when I look at the radiation sign, um, the number that goes with liters is 22.4. And the number that goes with molecules is the representative particles number or Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So now if I run this through my calculator, I have 4.5 EE9 times 22.4 divided by 6.02 EE23. And that tells me an answer of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 13th liters of oxygen. Now just to be clear on my units, molecules of O2 cancel with molecules of O2, leaving behind liters of O2. That's a really teeny tiny volume. Even something like four and a half billion molecules of a gas um, still occupies a teeny tiny uh, volume. That's, you know, uh, that's smaller than a nanoliter. A nanoliter would be 10 to the minus 9 liters. So that's really, really tiny. Um, that's because Avogadro's number is so large. 10 to the 23rd is kind of a big number to wrap your mind around. Our objective was to convert substance between moles, representative particles, grams, and liters. Um, hopefully you're feeling pretty confident with this process at this time. Uh, we just have to build our own conversion factor using the radiation sign. And it's a good practice to also label each step with the chemical that's involved. For mole conversions, it's the same chemical the whole way through. But as soon as we start reaction stoichiometry, it's going to change. And it's really important that we track which chemical we have at each point along the way.